counter conditioning crutches. This is the session where I'm counter conditioning Jesse to the sound of crutches being dropped. Jesse tends to be fearful of loud sounds, especially when they're unexpected. So I first start her with um, her being able to watch the sound. So the sound, the motion of the crutches predicts the sound that usually scares her, but the fact that she can see it often diffuses the fear part of it um, and it helps to start counter conditioning her. Um, note that I'm not doing any mark, I'm just simply feeding her after the sound occurs and I make sure that she is watching me drop it. So if she's sniffing and distracted I actually wait until she's looking in my direction to make sure that she knows it's coming. So at the beginning I have the equipment that I want the dog to uh, learn to not be afraid of just hanging around the room and that helps to desensitize them from it right away so that they're comfortable with seeing what it is. I've actually usually done a session where I shape the dog to interact with these objects that are laying on the floor. I don't show that here but I would mark and treat each time the dog looked at it, moved over to sniff it touched it with her nose, touched it with her paw, stepped over it, pushed it, and interacted with it in any way so that she's fully aware that this is the object that I want her to interact with. So you can see she's coming over to investigate it and I feed her food. Right away I don't start with any marking. She shows a little concern initially. She sort of glanced at it after it fell, but then she looks back at me. I'm not seeing any sort of um, fearful tail. I'm not seeing any sort of jumping movement or startling movement. So she's clearly aware of what it is that we're doing or the game that we're playing. We've played this game many, many times before with other objects. So this is a structure, a game structure that she already understands. I'm using a very high value treat as well and that definitely set, helps to offset um, any concern she might have because her enthusiasm for the treat uh, will overcome a little bit of fear. You don't want the food to be so high that the dog is so focused on the treat that he's essentially ignoring the sound because that can actually mask the fear and then when there's no food around the, the pairing isn't as effective. So you want to choose a sort of a middle of the road treat that's high enough value to keep the dog's attention and interest but not so high that it masks or so low that they're just not interested at all. So that was a good example of me waiting for her to re-engage. She was busy sniffing looking for food bits and that's fine, but I want her actually looking at me and looking at the object so that she can anticipate that the sound is going to be made. So there was a little bit of a startle jump there. Uh, and that's because I'm escalating the sound. I'm holding it higher so the dropping sound is louder and that's to be expected. I'll be monitoring that really closely in the next couple of drops. If she continues to escalate the behavior then I'm going to decrease the height that I drop it from to decrease the sound and if she seems to adjust to it then I'll just continue where I'm at and also continue getting it a little bit higher.
See that she moves back towards me before I even drop it? That's a good signal that her fear is somewhat abating uh, or decreasing. And that's actually what I look for, is having her start moving back towards the object before I ever feed her the treat. So that's a really good sign at this point. You can see to the left, Lucy's very interested in, in the progress. Uh, Lucy's highly motivated uh, by food and she's just waiting for her turn. And so after this session, Jesse will be the one sitting and watching and Lucy will have the turn at the crutches. Lucy really doesn't have issues with these kinds of sounds. She has more issues with electronic sounds. Um, so I'm not too worried about having her sitting that close and just watching. She knows it's her turn and that's enough reinforcement that, uh, you know, to, to watch the proceedings and see what's going on. She could totally get up and walk away and go in the bedroom or go into another part of the house if she wanted, but um, she's obviously making the choice to just sit and watch what's happening. <laughs> 